I'm no longer Good. echoing. Good, cool. Anyway, cool. here we are. Here we are. Here we are. Yet again. All kinds of notes for today. Much better than previous. I always leave that one there. I just screwed up somehow. Let me find myself. There we go. I've been trying to do that for 52 years. <laughs> anyway, here we are. I'm trying yeah. to... Re- I'm trying to remember what we talked about last time. Uh, last week was a bunch of different things. Uh, toxic was, toxic yeah. positivity. Oh, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. But yeah, first yeah. thing first, I I am very critical of what I do. And uh, I think that I actually owe you an apology. Because last night, I was listening to some of our episodes from last week. Yeah. And on more than one occasion, both in the closing at the end, I don't know if you go back and listen to them ever or not, or how often, or, but I'll go back and listen to both sides now and up the middle and Yerks tonight. And then also uh, at least once um, uh, be inspired. Uh, And I've noticed that in both sides now, on multiple occasions, you would say, I'm Jane Stahl. (laughs) Right over top. I totally miss it. (laughs) That's so funny. It it takes you a while, but you get there. I have noticed um, that. uh, And it just (laughs) sounds when, because we're audio only. Right. I don't think people like you and I can see each other's faces now, but we don't use that in any of the video format. We put the artwork in. And so I don't think that, but I know that nobody would be able to see that in the moment that you say that you're kind of going off me and and you see that I'm looking at something else, not in the camera. (laughs) He's ready. I am totally not paying attention at all. And you just get crickets. And when I hear that on the episodes, it just sounds like audio upstaging. Oh. You know, when an actor upstages their their, their co star, and every gets that actor to and everybody else to be looking at the actor that's doing the upstaging, it's in a moment when they're not supposed to be, you know, on that part of the stage, and uh-huh. it just looks like oh, Jane's just hanging out there, just waiting for <laughs> Yurgs to wake up. <laughs> well, no problem. I'm Jane Stahl. <laughs> And I'm yours. <laughs> I don't do one in a row. <laughs> and this is both sides now. So yeah, we had yes. we had a, we had a pretty full uh, a couple of episodes last week. This week is a little bit different for me though, because I have I, I'm struggling. So I'm hoping you can help out just a little bit here. And I'm struggling because of the whole Israeli-Palestinian situation. I mean, on top of Ukraine. And, and, And I can remember when that whole thing started and I thought, what the devil? Why are people doing that? It's so stupid. And now we have another one. What? What are people thinking? I mean, I just don't get it. I just don't get it. And that, on top of the fact that uh, currently in my home, I have no heat or hot water, something broke. So at some point later today, I'm hopeful that people come and help me get back in shape again. And we had a car that died. And so it's like, oh, my God. Everything at once. Everything, everything at once. But as my son said to me this morning, as I was driving him to work, you know, reminded me of the Chinese curse. Um, May you live in interesting times. And I've always thought that, you know, we do live in interesting times for sure. But he explained it this way, which was kind of new to me. He said, the Chinese curse to live in interesting times is a, a a a realization that if we are living really well and get everything we want, 
we will never wake up to what's important in life. Does that make any sense to you? Yeah. Um, I mean, we're just coasting along, we're buying what we want, you know, we're not uncomfortable in any kind of way. And so we are oblivious and get trapped in one addiction, as it were, or another. And so when he said that this morning, I thought, wow, you know, that's pretty, that's, that's pretty profound. I must be, I must be really woke (laughs) right now, really waking up. That, that, that funny that you say woke, because it actually reminds me of something that the conservatives are constantly saying. And Mm -hmm. that is that I don't know the actual verbiage, but, um, tough times create tough men. Oh, and Ooh. you know, like it, it has something to do with um, parents always want a better life for their children, right? And so the tough times of the late eighteen hundreds and the early twentieth century, you know, created um, the baby boomers, and they created you know the flower children and whoever, mm-hmm. uh, and now they created us, you know, Gen Xers, and, mm-hmm. and then the millennials, and then the Gen Z. And each generation is getting a little bit more pansy. Yes. Because they've had it too good. Yeah. They didn't have those tough times. Yep. Yep. And and I I think there's some accuracy to that. I Um, think so too. That doesn't mean that every Gen X or Gen Z or or millennial is a wuss. Right. I think there's also the so on some level the the um every generation complains about the ones that follow them. Um, that's true that's uh, how many times have you said or have heard somebody younger than you say (laughs) these kids nowadays oh all the time Um, all uh, the time yeah so but uh, yeah you 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 have a really good point there and you know just to just to once again reiterate something we've talked about in two episodes again my whole my whole experience in you know in literature helps kind of with that reminds me, and I guess I have to go back to some of my pieces again, but my my favorite pieces of literature again to remind me that, you know, life is difficult. You know, the Buddhists remind us what? All life is suffering. Suffering is caused by desire. Desire for a, what? An easy life, as it were. And there's desire for whatever it is. Anyway, and um, you can see suffering by ceasing to desire things and accept life, I suppose, the way it is. And then, of course, the Buddhists give us the Eightfold Paths and the Four Noble Truths. And, well, the Four Noble Truths being all life is suffering and all that. But the Eightfold Path to help us with our addiction to desire and to get rid of that. And I remember also... As I mentioned, I think probably last week, Viktor Frankl's book, Man's Search for Meaning, he's a survivor of the Holocaust. I mean, and, you know, one of his toxic positivity phrases that I've used over and over again throughout my life, that which doesn't kill you makes you stronger. And he has a right to say that. And that's just kind of what you just said. You know, that's kind of what you just said. And I need to remember that. The other thing is... um, you know, and I'm jumping around. I apologize to our audience for that. But, um, you know, in spite of all these things that have, uh, what do you say, interrupted my easy life in the past week and those big things like the conflicts of the war in Ukraine and the war in Israel, Gaza, you know, I also, right before this podcast today, was writing thank you notes for people who have sent donations to Studio B, the art gallery that I helped to direct. You know, and one of the things I wrote to one of our volunteers was that, you know, one needs to remember, as William Wordsworth said in lines written above Tintern Abbey, we need to remember those, what, tiny, little, little, nameless, unremembered, moments of kindness and of love 
that are around if we are paying attention. And I haven't been paying attention. So writing those thank you notes today was helpful in, in, in what? In reminding me, you know, that, that life isn't all conflict, although it seems to be at this point. So there. I, I think there's <laughs> two of us here that are often too hard on ourselves. Because I, I can't, I have a tough time imagining you not paying attention. I, mean, I know you're very fast paced. You, you said that in, uh, yeah. what was it? The, um, I think I'm ADD. Uh, about yeah. five elements of, con of confrontation. And, and by the way, the one thing, the one thing I would object to with your class, this is actually a note for today to mention oh. <laughs> from, from me going back and, and listening to all these things. When they complained about you talking too much. Oh, yeah. I'm like, you're in language arts. <laughs> Words are my business. One, and you're a teacher. Mm -hmm. And oh, by the way, you, you kids are somewhere between seventh and ninth grade. You should still be doing a lot of listening. <laughs> uh, but, but I just thought that was that was good. Oh, that's funny. Yeah, yeah I, I, I can't. I, I can't. I that's awesome that you take the time to thank those people um, with the actual cards uh, or as opposed to today's text messages and emails and, and so on. It's the least but, I can do. I figure. Yep. Yeah. But also I, I, I just, I have a tough time. You made that sound like you were taking advantage of people or um, not appreciative of whatever talents they gave to the studio. I, I just would find that hard to believe. Well, yeah, I, I, I've I, just been. I tell you what, a quick thank my, you because you have the ADHD or a, 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 <laughs> whichever one. Uh, I, I still think it would be a sincere one. <laughs> anyway, I've just you know I've just been reflected reflecting rather on you know just how uh, what do you say? Um, I can't think of the word on. And, and unhappy doesn't do it, depressed doesn't do it, uncomfortable, somewhere between those. Just how uncomfortable, Anxious. discomfited I am with what's going on in the world, not only internationally, but in our very own house. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. So anyway, um, so can we talk a little bit? Because I'm hoping some of your experiences will help me out here. You know. Um, uh, and, and my guess is that you've talked a lot about this on Up the Middle or in in your um, daily shows at 5.30, between 5.30 and 6.30. No, thanks um, for the plug. The, you're welcome. <laughs> um, but um, I, I'm sure you've talked about the Israeli-Palestinian situation. So can you... can. Talk to me a little bit about your take on that or what you've been talking about or what people have brought to you. How can I, how, how do you see this? Help me see it from your eyes. Well, the, the, you had gone into something that I had talked about on the radio show. In fact, I, today marks yet, well, today marks four weeks since I launched uh, an episode for Up the Middle. Um, I wow. had been, and that's why I did last night's episode very quickly. Uh, was um, it, it explains to the up the middle only folks that uh, I'm still here and uh, mm -hmm. I've been really focusing on this radio show that um, mm -hmm. where I, I pointed out that especially right now, Republicans who are siding with Trump, who is siding with Putin are anti Ukraine. Mm -hmm. Yes. Unfortunately. And then, then yeah. Then all of a sudden Hamas goes into action and now all of a sudden we got to get behind Israel. Where was that energy when, when Putin took the Crimean Peninsula or tried to take the rest of Ukraine? Why was one wrong and the other was not? Mm -hmm. Because you don't have the courage to stand up to a TV guy. Yeah. Is what it boiled down to. And everybody also says, with re if we just focus on Palestine, Israel, I just saw a, uh, a video last week with Ben Shapiro, who is a conservative uh, guy like me, 
uh, who's Jewish and his video were five lies about the Jewish Israeli conflict. And one of his so-called lies, I think is a lie. And that is that the Palestinians never had a homeland in what is today Palestine or Israel, or that the area was named by the Romans as Palestine to insult the Jews when the Romans took it over because the main enemy at the time of the Jews were the Philistines. I'm like, okay, that might all be true, but that doesn't void the fact that the right. people right. Doesn't who negate Palestinians yes. today right. Right. didn't have ancestry there back during this Roman time. And the other thing I think as far as I'm, I'm glad to see President Biden at least leaning in the direction of it. Of a two-state? Is that what yes. you're saying? Yes. Yep. I mean, it, it's it, it, you can't be Jewish, Israeli, either or both, because um, there's actually Christian and Muslim Israelis. Uh, you can't be for peace and not for the realization that the properties that the Palestinians are Palestinians are currently occupying, whether they're Jewish or wh whether they're Israeli owned or not, Gaza Strip, Golan Heights, um, West Bank, yep, West Bank. That's the other one. Uh, you, you can't be saying that you're all for peace and then not you know, uh, you know, give to the same thing that you were given, you know, mm -hmm. back in 45 or 48 or whenever mm -hmm. it was that Israel was created. And, you know, they said, well, Palestine would have, we would be kneeling down to terrorism because the Palestinian Liberation Organization was technically a terrorist group until Bill Clinton recognized Yasser Arafat and brought him and I forget which um which Yitzhak Rabin, I think. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I think it was Yitzhak Rabin. Um well some other nations have been founded at the hands of what we'll call what they are terrorist groups. One particular group was called the Sons of Liberty. Hmm. And I think you know who I'm talking about now. <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> Actually, you know, something about glass houses and pots and yes. kettles and whatever else. Yes. Um, yes. Yeah. So. So, have you gotten from your radio, your your daily radio thing, any what feedback have you gotten for that particular position? Of you know, of really, what you're doing is respecting all people. I mean, the Israelis, yes, the Palestinians, yes, their, you know, their desire to have their own, their own home. Okay. Yeah. I, I make clear what, what, yeah, what, what, done, okay. what was wrong, but th that's one of the points for, you know, that I took down for discussing today. And that is uh, the hypocrisy in media and government. Talk to me. What do you mean by You're that? You're talking about um, terrorist actions, which were. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're using hang gliders as your air force. You know, you're not military. Mm -hmm. You know, you're something else. And, <clears throat> um, you know, murdering, you know, there was um, Netanyahu and, and Biden were both critiqued for getting it wrong that these babies were not beheaded. They were burned alive, <laughs> then beheaded. Mm -hmm. That's what you're focusing on? No, people do. Yep. You you really think that Joe Biden was there to see for himself? Yep. And then if he doesn't say something because he's waiting for accurate information, we motherfuck him for not talking right away. Mm-hmm. Yep. Sorry, but this gets me a little pissed off. <laughs> a little. And then with that... You know, for how long has the Israeli Defense Forces been sniping children over the wall? Right. 
we don't talk about that because that's you know done by yeah. an actual government. Yeah. And and so th- that's the hypocrisy that I'm talking about. Israel is not innocent of terrorist actions and war crimes as well. One and, of the things, and, and to add to that, and again, I do not have the best, I, I can't give you source information, and I don't know if the source was, but I read something from a um, um, not prestigious, but reliable source. Mm-hmm. Um you know, criticizing Netanyahu for the people he has in his cabinet who are, you know, let's say not the, as John Fe- John Fetterman said on Stephen Colbert the other night about our Congress, not the brightest, yeah, brightest people. I don't know if you saw that particular episode. Yeah, I saw a but, clip of it. Yeah. Yeah. But criticizing Netanyahu for the people he has surrounding him, very similar to the to the people who are now in the House supporting the orange man. Yeah. 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 So, you know, there's some there's there's some criticism there as well. So yeah, I mean, yes, there are there are abuses on each side, that is that is for sure. But one of the things I also read very early in this situation was that Hamas does not represent Palestinians. They are a terrorist group within that particular part of the world. Uh, So they've become political and they do run the government in Gaza Strip, I think. I think they have the majority of the, um, I forget what it's called, the, the like their Congress uh, or, or, or city council, um, you know, because it's really not that big. Um, and then Hezbollah is pretty much the one of the Golan Heights in the West Bank. They're in the north. Mm-hmm. And, of course, they don't like each other. Now, for us to get behind Palestinian lifestyle, there do need to be some changes. I won't let that go without being thank you, you. Know, something that I think yep. the, the Jewish folks would would be and Israelis would be stepping yep. up. Um, yep. Women, children, gays. You know, it, yep. it's it's one thing to you know maintain and keep your faith. It's another thing to be two thousand years behind. Yeah, 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 and yeah. yeah. And it, it's if you're going to succeed on the international scene and be more than just the observ- observation that you are at the UN, right now the Palestinian state has the same membership as what is as the nation known as the Holy See, which is the Catholic Church. Right. They have statehood on the international level, but they're not a voting member of the United Nations. They're an observatory member, and that's what um, Palestine has recently been upgraded to. Um, I mean, the Palestine. I mean, you know, where are they really on a map? You know, is it those specific areas within Israel, which I guess are technically within the Israeli border? Um. Their settlements that uh, are occupied by people from both sides. And that was kind of the issue was, I guess, this, um, this, this attack was just right on the other side in outside of Palestinian occupied area. And that's why the hang gliders and, and they ambushed people coming in through the gate. And I saw one video of they were pretty blatantly hiding, quote unquote, in bushes, although it's pretty obvious. Mm-hmm. And this driver drives up to a gate and they just pop out of the bushes and with machine guns, you know, nail the guy after mm-hmm. the gate was already in the process of opening. Mm-hmm. So that's how they got into the one end of the complex where they, you know, did their massacre. 
and then, like I said, they, they used hang gliders to get over top of walls. Um, I mean, it, yeah, but, uh, anyway, their own lifestyle is, is just not modern and, and, and it's not, you know, you want to live in a desert and, and in mountains. Okay. That's one thing. But if you're going to engage with the rest of the world, you need to, you know, at, at least on some level, be at that level. Like you said, with the, um, not the, not the, uh, <clears throat> not the five stages of the confrontation, but the other one, the, the, uh, the, the levels six of moral stages. Development. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know, it's time for you to come up to two and three. <laughs> Something like that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, because, yeah. yeah, I mean, they're still pretty far down. Well, um, as far as you asked about feedback, though. Yes. I did do, I did a post on Facebook earlier. <clears throat> and um, the two hashtags, two of the hashtags that I used uh, were stand with Israel and stand with Palestine. And I don't know if you use hashtags on any of your social media posts at all, but when you start typing that in, Facebook and, and most platforms will kind of fill in the blanks for you. They'll okay. see where you're going yeah. and they'll fill out the rest of it so that you can just click on that, you know, um, hy hyperlink. But one of the things that Facebook includes with a hashtag link like that is the number of other posts of that same hashtag. So you can see if it's a popular hashtag or not. Okay. And uh, as, as, as a result, you know, is it being searched, therefore, frequently? And will your post be, you know, brought up as a result? Stand with Israel had 141,000 previous uses prior to me typing that in. Stand with Palestine had 519,000 uses. Wow. Yeah. <clears throat> Three or four to one. Wow. And with Israel. And I think, I mean, that's very, that's a very unscientific poll. It's Facebook. It's, it's, you know, whatever. Right, right, right. But if that is a, any remote reflection of society, then I think President Biden is correct to begin steering folks in a direction of, you know, a Palestinian, a, a, an internationally recognized Palestinian state. Yep. Because that's, that's a size of, I mean, if that was an election, that would be, you know, that, a that would out. be, yep. Uh, yep. Yep. yeah, that would yep. be a landslide. Well, one of my friends, and I have interesting friends, suggested that, um, you know, he is concerned, and I know we, the United States, is concerned about this also in the travels of our people, um, that, uh, what do you say, that um, this as far as is safety? going to spread, that's going to spread, that Iran is looking to become involved somehow, that possibly motivated or encouraged by Russia that the other authoritarian countries surrounding this are looking for ways to join up in this whole conflict. Do you see any of that? I mean, you have a different perspective of how things operate, certainly, than I do, and my friends do. What do you think? I think that's that's our next episode, actually, is the fear-mongering and the um, uh, r rage porn as uh, our one of our future guests um, calls it. Ah, yes. Yes, let's uh, just yeah, give, that, give our audience it. a heads up that yeah. one of the things we are we are eager to do is invite people to to both sides now. In fact, next week we have scheduled someone locally here in Boyertown to talk about an acknowledged um, hate hate group uh, I think so, moms yes. for liber moms for liberty yeah and who are um several members of moms for liberty are running for seats on the border town area school school board and you know have 
that group has a presence currently on the on the Boyertown Area School Board. And so we have invited someone who's very active politically in school board elections, Donia Savage. We have invited her to come and talk a little bit about the dangers of continuing to support and elect people who are part of this group. That's yeah. next week, one of our segments, yeah. right? And, and yeah, and, and, you and, talked and about. Uh, we'll have a supplement to our next episode that we're, we're cutting today, and that is with uh, regards to the anger porn. On Yerg's radio, there exists a show um, that is about that very topic uh, and bringing down the temperature, as he as he says it, uh, getting every, instead of getting everybody so hot. And that's, I'm really uh, David interested Beckham. in that. Yep. Yeah, yeah. I, I really, I, we, he and I were on a call yesterday uh, because he's also contemplating doing a live show for the station, and um, we were talking about me wanting to get him on be inspired because I know what you do with be inspired. He would Absolutely. fit there. Yep. But I didn't realize that everybody is really has also has a closer nexus to the Boyertown area than him just knowing somebody who grew up there, um, which would, you know, obviously, you know, be me. Um, but you had then turned and suggested, well, what if we brought him on here? And I'm like, yeah, that's just as easy. Let's and, do it. Uh, a, yep. a little comfortable for him. So I'll continue with um, scheduling as uh, you did with Donna. Sounds Do good. you have any where our Mondays are going to be more challenging that I need to be aware of? And remember, we're recording. So if we need to talk about that later. <laughs> yeah. Um, the 30th of this month, I, I need to schedule around that. Either okay. the day before or the day after or something like that. We'll talk about that yeah. later, but I think we're at our 30 minute limit for this episode. Yeah. Am I right? Yeah. And yeah, so, this is, we're not going to solve anything in just one episode like this. So, right. uh, yeah, we'll, we'll, I will definitely be talking about that later tonight at 5 30. Sounds and, good. Uh, you said to segue into that part of the show. Um, you can get me pretty much any, anything about me is at, uh, yergs.com, Y E R G Z.com. That's the radio. That's all podcasts, including this one and uh, the radio show, uh, and you can contact me through that as well. Jane, where can we find you? You can find me on your favorite podcast platform, uh, Be Inspired. And um, I am so excited for this week. This past week, I dropped two episodes of Be Inspired. One was the pastor of a local church who's Evangelical uh, evangelical efforts have to do with asking people the story behind their tattoos. And we talked about that in a previous episode here. But I dropped um, a Be Inspired episode of a discussion with him this week. But I also dropped an episode on about a young man, relatively young man, mural artist by the name of Chris B. Murray, who completed in little little uh, over two weeks, a mural on the side of one of our buildings in Boyertown that's absolutely beautiful. It's called a, a Better Bear. And you can find the episode on Be Inspired. And if you go to Studio B's Facebook page, you can see photographs oh, of, yeah. of the mural. And it's absolutely gorgeous. And I encourage people to, you know, to do that. I love mural art. It's great. Okay, so end of this episode, beginning of next one, I'm Jane Stahl. And I'm Yergs. <laughs> Attaboy. Yep. We'll see you on the next one. Sounds good.